the cow. I wanted to put a couple mists to bed. And the one, one pet peeve that I really, it really, it does really irritate me is when people say classification's all about uh, show ring type. And that is so far from the, it's such a farce. I mean, I don't even, it really irritates me. The only reason there's any correlation between the show ring and classification is because those cows score good because you're not taking your ugly cows to the show. And when you guys get done here, you go in the barn and there's a stormatic daughter here that's 91. She's about, Dan says she's about 55 inches. That cow, there ain't one cow man here that wouldn't want to milk that cow. But if you take her to any show, county fair or local show, I'll tell you, you're gonna stand dead last. But for classification, she's got everything we're looking for. So I want to put that to, to, to bed, because right? that's, not, that's not what it is. Show ring type is more about style and stature. Classification is more about functionality. We have a true type cow, we score our, these cows as close as our ability to that true type model. The other thing I, we get asked a lot, and I don't, like I said yesterday, I don't know a lot about it, but we get asked about it a lot, so I'm going to bring it up, is um, genomics. Well, we don't have an opinion. We have opinions. We don't stress our opinions to you about <laughs> genomics. But the one thing I can tell you about genomics, I think it's a, it's a tool. It's science. It's here to stay. But for some reason or another, we took all our, and jumped right into to the deepest water with it. And it was, it's the Bible right now. And it's, I think in the end, it'll level out to where it is just a tool and it'll be here forever. But it won't be the driving force behind everything, but that's just my opinion. That's probably not, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but it makes sense. When you guys start buying expensive heifers and they're calving in 76 and 78, you're going to say, man, I can grow them at home. I don't need to pay that kind of money for them calves. But that's just my way of thinking. So as a class, are you going to ask us about genomics? We're going to kind of be neutral. We don't care. That's your decision to make. So we might have an opinion, but we're, you're better off not to express it your opinion no matter what way you feel about it. So then I'm, I'm going to get into my demonstration now and uh, Joe's got a fine cow and I always pick out a pretty good cow because it's really easy to explain. Uh, the first thing we measure, we have 19 traits that we'll do today but we have 20, it's locomotion, we're not going to do locomotion today. But we have 19 traits we do and all the traits are scored from 1 to 50. There's a few traits and then as I get to them, I'll tell you they're two-way traits. What two-way traits are is means that 25 is, is ideal. And if it's going too much the other way or too much this way, they're getting out of the zone. But otherwise, usually, the higher the number, the better. So the first one we do is we measure stature. We used to measure it up here, but we measure right back here. We come across this hip bone, we get about halfway right there, and we measure our stature. And 56 inches is an average cow. So when we start training a class fire, we get our tape out, we measure where they're 56 inches, and we say, don't forget it. We don't measure 60 inches. They come in with their 60 inches measured, and we change their way of thinking. 56, because when you walk up there, you got, this is my 56, and if you're not going like that or that, you walk up there and you go, it's easier to go how many inches up she is or how many inches down she is to be accurate. And that's why it's such a high, heritable trait is because we're pretty accurate at measuring stature. That's why I think it's 37%, Dan? Yep. And that's why. And when we get to this cow, he's extra huge. And Dan didn't like this. I, when, I, when I got in there, I stepped in by her this morning. He says, oh, we got one we can deduct from. No. <laughs> Everybody likes that. <laughs> Take my point. So anyway, she's an automatic 50. The next thing we measure is, is, is strength. And there's three things, only three things in our linear score that that go into strength. Number one, you've got to actually look at the width of the chest right down here, how much width she actually has. And you've got to look because you can have a, a frailer cow stand like this far apart and she's winging out about this far on both sides and she's frail. If you just go, oh, she stands really, really wide, she's strong. That's not always the case. Number two, we take the substance of bone from the knee to the point of elbow. How big is that bone? If it's one of those little uh, uh, pencil leg cows about the size of this, I'm going to tell you, they don't last long. And, and you won't see them in the barn on the average. 
At five years of age, you're not going to see them in the barn. The next thing we, me we measure is the muzzle. People don't think we look at the head. We do. We don't mention it. But uh, when I'm training, I see I got two trainees here now. <laughs> I tell them, if you're ever confused about the strength, you're leaning one way or another, look at the muzzle. They're going to never lie to you. If they can suck peas out of a pop bottle, mark her frail and she'll be gone. This cow's not the strongest drawn cow, but she's she's average or above, and she's a little above average in her uh, bone structure. And I wouldn't have her in the 40s. Yesterday I had a nice cow and I had her 44. This cow I'd have about 34 in strength. She, if I had to do anything, I'd like to widen her out a little bit more. The next thing is really easy. Body depth on our linear scale is from here to the deepest part of the belly. And the one thing as a class where you got to get used to doing is looking at short-legged cows because guys will tell you all the time, well, oh, she's short-legged, but she's deep body. Well, she looks really deep because she's short to, she's close to the ground. Just like tall cows sometimes don't appear to... Yes, Dan? I was just going to say, anytime that anybody has any questions, if size on a particular trait... Oh, yeah. And you've got that co a question about that trait, you got him here, folks. He's free today. And it's not going to get you dinged on the cow that you're asking him about in your own barn. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, thanks, Dan, for reminding me of that. But anyway, body depth is that just taken from here to here. And when I look at this cow, she's, she's really tall and she's really long, but all I'm doing for linear is taking this measurement from here to here. And she's a tall cow, and I'm going to make her 40. I'm going to say she's excellent in body capacity. And, and uh, some of you say, well, I'd like to have her a little deeper. Well, if I took two inches off her legs, you'd say, man, that cow's really deep. So she's deep. To, to me, she's deep. The next thing we measure is rump uh, dairy form. And uh, it's not, we score them on dairy strength, but when we do dairy form, it's just how dairy they are. We look at the openness of rib. That's why I want you all here to see how open this rib is. I get all three fingers in that rib. We also want that rib to angle back. I put my pen here, you can see it's angling back. Sometimes it's like this. You get to breeders and you're scoring a cow and they say, well, she always starts out really good, but it seems like when I breed her, she tapers off right away. You look at her, you can say, you can almost guarantee the ribs are running like this. And not always, there's always exceptions to the rule, but on the average, that's why. You want that rib angling back like this. So that, the first two things we look at is openness, angle of the rib. The next thing we look at is that clean, dimple thigh, flat bone. Long dairy neck and a pliable skin. Them five things drives our dairy form score. This cow is extremely dairy. I would have her 45 in dairy form. She is open rib, she's flat bones, clean, she's got a, or maybe just tinge longer in her neck, but then I'd be thinking about 50. Any questions on dairy form? The next thing is a two way trait, the rump angle. We take from this to this. We want a 6% slope, which is about E much. We want a 6% slope. If I would make this cow 50, these things would be down about here, about three inches. If I make her a five or a one, these would be way up here. So, so that's, that's how we measure uh, uh, the rump angle. That's, that's all we measure. The second thing we measure, then it would be the rump, the pin width. We call it rump width, it'd be pin width. We used to do thorough width, we do pin width, and that's, we take the measurement here. Five and a half inches would be a 25. Uh, three inches, uh, three inches is a one. And eight inches, used to be seven inches, but we changed this almost two years ago now. Our, it was a year and a half ago, we changed our measurement. We, we went out and measured a thousand cows, and we said, yep, we don't, can't find no twos no more. So we went to three and we added an inch. So to be a 50, you would have to have eight inches. This cow here is a 40, 40, 42. She's got a pretty good pin width. Then the next thing we measure is uh, we go to side view on the leg. Another two-way tray. This cow's a little too legged because before I showed Dan, is this okay? And he says, well, I got a little more than that. And I said, well, look at this leg. And she, she proves it out here. She's almost a, a 30 on that leg. And over here, I think she's... Just about 25 to 23, she's about average on this leg, which is really good. Now, if she's really sickle, I'd have a large number. If we go on straighter, which we'd call posty, going straight, it's going to be a lower number. And if you get down into the 
to the single digits, it's extremely pulsy. Just like if you get into the 40s, 45, especially 45 or 50, she's extremely, extremely uh, set her leg. Then the next thing we do, we walk behind the cow and we do rear view. And we're saying the average cow has a little bit of toe out. And when I look at this cow and I catch her, especially her left leg, I want to make her just a little bit below average in rear view. The right leg, you always catch it going like this. The left leg, I always catch it going a little bit like this. So I'm going to have her probably in the tw low 20s, but I'm not going to make her 25 because I think that's where I want to change her. Yes, yesterday when you used that analogy with the lines, I think that really was a good thing to... Okay, yeah, because especially when you're in a tie barn, when you're outside moving, you can get the angle of the leg pretty good. In the tie barn, it is a little harder. You catch cows standing, eating all kinds of ways. So the best thing to do is, is what we teach them is look from here to here. Some people are saying take that line of string and go like that. Well, we don't do any of that foo foo stuff. We look at this here. And we look, and if there's a little flex in it, hock, you know, and sometimes it's like this. That's a high number. Sometimes you can see it stressed. It's like carrying a pail of water, just like this. And you say, man, she's really posty. Sorry, girl. So that, that's how we evaluate the, the side view of the leg. Foot angle is pretty simple too, if you just got to learn your angles. When I started, I wasn't so good at my angles. <laughs> 45 degree angle is, 20, is a 25. So if you, this cow's better than 25. She, she gets up on her toe good. And if you're going flatter, you're going to use a, a, a smaller number. If she's steeper, you use a better number. 25 is actually a good foot. We don't. If you get a 25 and you track good from the rear, we're, you don't have to have a 40 in foot angle to have an excellent leg, but we like to have a 25. So on this cow, particular cow, I would make her about 35 on her foot angle. She's, she's above average to me, or quite a bit above average. Uh, then we get into the good stuff. I just, I'm a udder man. We get into the, into the udder, and the first thing we measure is full udder. And this cow's got it, guys. You take it, this is the ligament we look at right here. She's the same on both sides. Sometimes you get cows that are two-sided. Believe it or not, we take the bad side. Just like in the legs, I should mention, we take the bad leg, we never take the good one, unless she was injured. Same with the udder. If she wasn't injured, we take the bad side. This cow happens to be good on both sides. I'm gonna make it a 50. She has really, really, really got it smacked onto the body wall. And that's all it is, is just taking this ligament here, how flat that comes onto the body wall. You get some that cup like this, some you can put a skunk in there. <laughs> you, 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 so you just look at that ligament. And if you really get that roll, you're gonna make it uh, uh, under average. And there is one in the, if we did this in the barn, I had a cow across the walk that I would have had about a 15. I want to show you the difference. So if you get in there, she was, I don't know, she was the fifth cow or something. Real slopey rump cow, you look at her left side of her forwarder, she's, a, she's not as, t as tight. Then the next thing we measure is real her height and width. And I said this yesterday, when I was in training, we, uh, the guys I was training with was Jim Saporski, myself, Doug Fellers, and uh, Steve Christman. And we were missing this utter height. And we really had no place. We One night we were drinking some barley pops with uh, Steve Burr, and we says to him, hey, we would be a lot more accurate if you gave us a place to measure this. I didn't, we didn't care if it was halfway up or here. Just give us a place to measure it. Well, he stayed out as late as I did, and then he must have stayed up really late because the next morning he come back, and we still use his, his, he had it all down on paper. He decided seven inches from the tip of the vulva would be a 50 for rear height. 10 and a half inches would be a 25. 12 and a half inches would be a one. So we measure from here. If it's eight inches, it's a 40. If it's, if it's uh, 10 and a half inch, 25, you know, when we just keep on going down, we adjust <coughs> five marks for every, uh, five numbers for every uh, inch. This cow, I'm gonna make her 40. I've seen higher rear udders, but it's up here. And we measure from our, where our milk is. We don't measure this cord here. We come right down here, this is where I'm gonna say her milk is starting right about there. That's where we're gonna measure. Udder width, um, he comes and he goes from this crack right here to that crack. And you guys say, well, should we have them uttered up? And I always say, that's your discretion. I think when they're melted out, I can do a pretty good job of 
get Adnan, but at the show rings, why do they have them full? Because they look good. So it's, it's, it's a preference for you. It does, for me, it doesn't make a difference, but I like them when they're uttered up. I'll be honest with you. And here, I measured this cow here, and she's pretty wide. I got my pen here. My pen just happens to be five and a half inches. So five and a half inches is average. <clears throat> and uh, eight inches is a 50. Three inches is a one. So if I go by that crack there, and I'm going to have to get it over there because she don't have, she's not full. By George, she's almost seven inches. So I'm going to have her 40 in root her width. And then the next thing we measure is utter depth. This is where she excels in. We go from the point of hot, which I'm going to describe it right about there is the point of hot for me. We go up to where the milk is. We're saying the average cow should be two inches above her hot. And oh, I didn't tell you this, but linear is based on a mature cow. So keep that in mind. We don't look at a two-year-old and say, oh, uh, she's 25 in front end, but she'll be 35, so I'll make her 35. We do her as a mature cow to computer. And when it gets to Brattleboro, that all gets adjusted up there off the computer by age, by what's on that age in our, when you get, that's when we print out, you see the age by the cow. That's what that's all about. So anyway, back to our other depth. Every inch you go above two inches would be 30, 35, four inches, and on up. And if you come down, you get to the point of hot, that's going down would be 15. Two inches down would be 15. So to get a one, you'd have to be three inches below the hot, and that would be a one. And that's how we, how we measure utter depth. And then uh, we get into uh, cleft. You gotta take right from the bottom of the quarter. And yesterday I said, the tricky part is sometimes if the quarter's light and it's up like this. You gotta come to the good quarter and come down to the bottom here and try to square it up the best you can. And then you look in there and the one and a quarter inches is the 25. If it gets level, it's a 15, and if it gets to where it's beveled, it's one or five. So this cow's got a pretty good cleft, and you look at that thing, uh, I don't think I'd make it a 40, but I'd make it an awful close. To me, it's between 35 and 40. She's got a super cleft in there. Then we get to teeth placement, and we do the fronts and the backs, but the fronts and backs are measured at different places. The fronts, you gotta bend down, and you look at the quarters, and as my trainees will know, you can't take it from the side view, because you take it from the side view, it'll throw you off. You gotta get down behind them. And a 25 is in the center of the quarter, of the front quarter, the 25 is. If they're going closer to the cleft, it'll be a bigger number. If they're going out, it'll be a smaller number. And that's, a, that's you gotta get used to going down behind them. You'll see a, the fat man goes like this all the time, because I can't squat, so that's why he goes like that. And hers are going into the quarter. They're not really in there, but I'd make them in the 30s, low 30s. The rear teeth, that's interesting because we don't measure in the middle of the quarter. We come back here and we go by the base. Here's the base of the teeth. We go by the base. If they're touching at the base, you can have them cross it like this and have a hole through there. They're still not going to be 50. They have to touch at the base like this. You have to touch at the base of the teeth for rear teeth. And so when I get to hers, she's really close. She's but I but they, there is that crack there. So I'm gonna have her 45, 47. I'm not gonna make her a 50 because they're not touching at that base. You gotta mention robotic milkers a little bit. So oh, <laughs> yeah. We just had a guy yesterday said that he had to peel off a bunch of his uh, uh, Damien's and that because he put robotics in. And they couldn't milk them because the teeth are like this. And he just put in, um, was that Paul? Norbaum. Norbaum. Just put in robotics and he had to sell off. Even some, there were some of his best cows. <laughs> robotics couldn't get on them. So, I don't know. I, well, I, what I think, when we, people ask, how are you going to breed for that? This is what I said yesterday. When we were, and my brother Bob is here, and he knows, we were always taught, when you look at that red book on utter trace, man, if that arrow's shooting off that page, that's good. But it's going to get to be, we're probably on cleft, we're not going to want to take it off that arrow going off there. And you sure don't want to start breeding for flat bottom udders, so you're probably going to want to start looking like you do rump angle. 
You want an a, a ideal rump angle. You want one in the middle of the page. Like sideways, you want one in the middle of the page. Some people say, well, I think, I had this question brought up to yesterday. Is it better to take, there's a guy from our old county here, Pete Brickle, he says, is it better to take, uh, if you've got a sickle leg to breed it to a posted legged bull, or if you've got a posted leg to breed it to a sickle legged bull? And I said, I don't do that. Breed to the, breed crap. You might straighten it out, and then you think you're, you're uh, a rocket scientist, but I guess what, they're not carpenters. Just start breeding crap. That's why we made so much progress on udders, is because people started breeding for correctness of udder. Sorry, if, I've got a question. Sure. Sorry. And this is as a breeder. Um, if, if you're going to start talking about cleft and, and uh, rear teeth placement to be more of a two-way trait, wouldn't it be beneficial because of the high correlation, the deep cleft and close rear teeth placement to utter texture and quality that you put in a measurement for texture and quality so that those of us who want to use a bull can separate those back teeth, we're not automatically starting to tick for bulls that make meaty udders and flat bottoms. That, that makes sense to me. And if, if, we, if we get that far, I will tell you what will happen. The one guy is going to tell us it's not heritable enough to be in the red book because it's. Neither but was so we're, but he will he will do it as a research trait, and then we'll do it as a research trait, and it'll take us four years. Pretty soon I won't be working. What, 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 what you said yesterday about like early, you know, the same thing. It was a research trait. The heritability wasn't high, and now it's the number one driver to put like a pot. It is. I can, when Dan and I we were out in uh, Syracuse in 1990. And I raised my hand, I said, how come rear legs, rear view ain't in the red book? It's one of the most important traits to evaluate legs. He says, no, it's only 7%. I don't know where he got 7% from, but he said it was only 7% heritable. And what happened, how we got it in the red book, and it's the number one thing now, after we started scoring feet and legs in May of 93, we had about 2 million cows done, and he thought he'd go back and see what correlation on the linears had that with the cows are scoring 87 to and the higher excellence. That was his, to see what the common was, common linear trait, what, what they had would correlate the most. It wasn't the foot angle. It wasn't the side view. It was the rear view. And if back, you can all remember those, those marks from back in the late 80s and early 90s. Man, some of them were really sickle. But if they stood like this, they wore good. If they hocked in, they didn't last for the darn. But everyone, I had an old cow one time up in Minnesota. She was uh, 12 years old. She was stuck on 75 because of her, her legs. And she tracked straight. And I just said, I did the old Merle Howard thing. I said, she's been 75 long enough and I took her into 80. Because, you know, the only reason she was that way is because of the set to her leg. And so now we do take rear view as our number one thing. Then it's the foot angle. So uh, Dan is right about when we get to the udders, if we start doing texture. I wasn't for doing rear teats anyway, because it, it correlates so high. Guy by you guys, does that not correlate with udder cleft? If you're making 150 in udder cleft, you're gonna be 50 rear teeth and if you've got one that's really close in teeth length and you want to make her 25 in udder cleft, you better take another look because she's not a 25. <laughs> she's probably like that in udder cleft. It correlates, so we're, we're, but as everything goes global, we try to be a partner, we try to make them feel like a partner, and they gotta have rear teeth done. We think it's just, it runs, it just correlates so high with the cleft, like Dan said, and I would rather, the Canadians do a, do utter quality, but it's, it's, um, it is very judgmental. Jack. It, it, actually, the, the the guy that milks the cows could do the best job. Yeah. The only problem is that the, he thought it was going to add his final H score. Hinder, hinder his final score. <laughs> He'd screw it all up. <laughs> It'd all be good. It'd all be good. You say you just count. But, if, but, if you, but, but the, and you get to some guys and says, man, she just doesn't have the quality I want her under. Some guys will just blurt it right out to you. But most guys, if they thought it was going to hinder the final score on the other score, they're not going to tell you. The mum will be the word. So uh, anyway, then we get to teat length, and that is a two, another two-way trait. Two and a quarter inch is a, is a 25 on the front and rears, and uh, we, haven't, we haven't been doing rear teats that long. Uh, it, it, matter of fact, we got a national staff conference in April, and he's going to bring up some of our work on the rear teat uh, length and placement of them. 
But usually, and you can go home and see tonight when you're milking, but most of the time the front teeth gonna be longer than the rear teeth. I mean, that's, that's the one thing I noticed. More when you start doing something, you notice that. That, so anyway, if to be a, 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 a 50 in teat length, should have to be three, what is it Willis, three and a quarter? No, it used to be three and a half, I think it's three and a quarter, huh? Is it, what is it Mike, three and a half? Three and a half? And that would be a 50, so it takes a pretty long teat. And to be a one, it has to only be an inch. And boy, we're getting a lot of those. So uh, I'll keep this until I get to the udders when we start breaking down to the udders course, some of the, some of the things that we do. So when you get down to teat placement, all I got left to do is mark down my uh, condition score. And there again, it's another thing that I'm not the big fan of because in the United States, it's so so much to do with stage of lactation and they gotta go dry sometime. So they're gonna carry, start getting some weight up over the short ribs, the pins and that. And so, but we do it. So this cow here, I would not have her no more than a 20. She's peeled off pretty good. So uh, there again, that's just a, a stage of lactation thing for me. You get yesterday, or we were training and we had some, we had some 40s, but they were really late stage cows. They were milking 365 days or longer and they start picking up weight. So when we get all my linear done, and I, I'm sure I'm a whole lot faster than that than I'm talking right now, we come into to the breakdowns and the first one is front end capacity and that's used to be 20%, but as of September of 13, it's 15%. We changed that. that and the legs used to be 15 and we raised that to 20. When we do our front end capacity, everything from the hip forward is in there. Main emphasis on front end. With the chest, drop of a fore rib and spring of fore rib, and then body capacity, back and loin. Stature used to be the rump and stature when we had frame score were the number one and two things we evaluated with the most weighting. We no longer have, we have very little weight on stature. And then breed character. And breed character, for a lot of you guys, is just style. We were gonna call it style, but we, with the, the, I hate to say commercial guys, but, but for, for today's argument, let's call them commercial guys. I think they're all dairymen nowadays. But the commercial guy really has a hard time with the word style. And Willis was training, and I said, we gotta get this out of Jerome Meyer. We gotta get him to stop using the word style. And about the first day Willis had him, Willis called me that night and said, I think the farmer broke him. <laughs> he got to this, we're doing, they were doing sets, not me, they were doing sets, and he gets to this cow, and boy, I really like to style your cow, and the farmer went, style, style, you can take that style, and I can't say what else he said. <laughs> 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 so, but if you use breed character, they're fine with it. They're all about breed character. Same as you use type to them. Well, that's for the registered guy. But what do you expect in your cow? I like to milk for three, four lactations. Well, that's what type is. It's longevity, folks. It makes them last. That's what makes them profitable. Milking them one year and going out the door, that's not as profitable as milking them for four years. So that's, I always say, type is just longevity. So anyway, we get to this cow, we're going to do her front end. And so I already told you, I got her about 34 in the strength, got her 40 in depth. She is so tall, and I'm supposed to take some off, but I'm not going to. And uh, <laughs> I told Dan I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I'm gonna make her actually in her front end capacity score. She is so long from head to tail. And when we, when we do, do our body this way, we, when we do linear, we just take this. But when we do our final score, we take this <coughs> length into consideration. And we also take it if they're coupled. We take some off when they're them short body cows that look like they're really deep and they're only about that long. We take off. This cow is really long from head to tail. She's a long cow. And you'll see that when she goes back in the barn, how long she is. Uh, so that's 15% of the score. And then we go in, get into dairy strength, and that's now we get a little different than we did dairy form. Dairy strength, our driving force is our dairy form score, but now we're going to tie in the width of the chest the spring to the rib, the depth of the fore rib, we're gonna tie that all together. And uh, where I had this cow 45 about in dairy form, I'm not gonna make her 93 or four in dairy. 
usually with my linear, if they got enough strength, yesterday's cow, we didn't have to change anything. I didn't swipe from her. This one, I'm gonna swipe a little bit. Not a lot, because she's a three-year-old, but I am gonna swipe some from her. So I want to make this cow about 91. I can see if I was following somebody and had her 92, I wouldn't bat an eye. But if they got her 93 or 94, they got her too high because of the front end. She needs a little more engine. And I think she's going to get it, but we're doing a three-year-old today, and that's all she's got. She don't have all the engine yet. So that's, that is 20% a, a of the score. Then we get to rump. Very important part of the cow, but it's only 5%. And we used to do the thorough position in the rump when we scored it. But we dropped that down into the leg score now, the thorough position. So when we're doing the rump, all we're doing is the angle of the rump, the width of the pins, secondary traits, recessed anus, how the tail head lays. That all go, goes in there. But main emphasis on rump angle and width, and she's got it. She has that. She does. She does have just a slight recess, and I would call it slight, I wouldn't call it moderate or severe. So in our new handhelds we're getting in uh, uh, April, we're going to start scoring you guys after April 6th. We're going to have a thing in there, we're calling them dings so far, I don't know why, but it's the only thing the they could come up with. We're going to put one ding, two dings, three dings, one ding slight, hardly any deduction. Two dings, probably a five point deduction and a ten dinger. A 10 point deduction in rump. Now you say, holy man, I got an excellent rump, and now you guys are going to make her uh, 80 points. Well, just think it's only 5%, so it's a half a point, guys. So it might not affect their score. She might have been 86.3. That 5 tenths ain't going to affect their score, so you're not going to see much of a difference because we're doing it already. But now we're going to tell you more about it. Oh, I got to put a ding in there for, for uh, recess because we're already doing it. How do you fix that trait? I was asked that yesterday, that's a very good question. I don't know. <laughs> Someone asked, is it high pin cows or low pin cows that are recessed? And it's both. I, I see cows that are, you can make 45, 50 in rump angle, tail will be cocked up here, be recessed, it's all heck. We notice it a lot in high pin cows, but it happens in low pin cows too. So I don't think there's anything in the red book. You, Dan? No, we, you know, one case, Russell, that I think is a good example is Durham. You know, we all know what a great Bull Durham was, but we all know that he had some issues yep. when it came up there with that recessed anus and with, with, with the rump. And as far as, if, if the rest of the cow, I mean, if the cow is 91 points and she's got a rump that I ain't in love with, I guess the only thing I can tell you, like with my with the Durhams that, that I've had and talking to other guys, you just, you know, you, you just breed to a bull that's got moderate, you know, you stick with what got you there in the first place? The width, the angle, and hope and pray that you get one that we're but, 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 out of but it. it is not a high heritable trait that you can just grab out and say, if I breed a bull that's got this, I'm gonna get away from this. It's not like that. And I think Durham was a great example. Even though you didn't like the rumps all the time, you sure as heck liked the rest of them, so you live with it. Yeah, just so you know, when we get our new handhelds, we got we got the uh, and they might change it, they got until April 6th, but right now they're thinking like six, I think it's six traits, five or six traits, that we're going to do that. We're going to put crampiness in there, we're going to have meaty udders, spread toe, hairy ward, I think there's six of them, and recessed anus. So we're, we're going to, we're, we're just, and that's all research. It's not going to, right now it's just, we're just doing it as research. It's not going to affect their score any bit, any bit. We're just doing it as a research. So, be, yes, Bob? As a national convention in Minnesota, we were shown a picture of the narrow front ended cows. You remember it, Dan? The guy says, uh, you could tell, I knew it was from Canada right away. These were the first seven junior two year olds lined up in the show ring, and every one was like that. Now we're trying to breed Gary's strength. But yet, the good-looking otters and the tall cows are still kind of narrow. We have it at home. Well, it, it, we're working on it. And we, we've we only went to dairy strength, but I'm telling you, when you go and do sets, you're starting to see round-bone cows. Am I right, Willis? Oh. 
You're start, so I can't see a stain on dairy, dairy strength. For I, I, I think I'll be working at hosting it by the time the type advisory committee decides we're going to have to go back and give them a shot of dairiness again. But wouldn't, wouldn't you say because of the emphasis that we're putting on BPR and on, on productive life, we want these greasy ones that breed back quicker. They don't have to milk as much. If you take, you know, if you look what goes into some of those uh, health traits, you know, yeah, that cow don't want to work so hard. She'll carry more condition on her. She'll breed back quicker. And I think that's what you're seeing yeah. on, on your sets is you're doing more daughters of those, those, those kind of bulls. Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, that that uh, I don't agree with that formula. If I and I mean, you don't take my word for it. I'm just telling you my preference. The only thing I watch on on productive life is DPR, breeding back, and. Uh, uh, I've got a brain fart here. Somatic cell. Somatic cell. Somatic cell's for real. Yep, them, them two real. things, you can take it to the bank. And the rest of that stuff, I don't I don't agree with it. If, if we want to go that fast and get to these raw ones, I always say, that, you know, when I'm out having a couple of barley pops and nobody really gives a shit what I say, I say, let's go to Angus. They're nice and fat and they'll breed back. <laughs> One time I was at a type advisory committee meeting down in uh, Chicago and... Uh, uh, Doug Maddox was still living, and he was the president of our association. And we had a guy up there, and he's in the middle, we'll talking and talking, and about how the Brown Swiss are, and blah blah and this and that. We got to go that <laughs> way, and he let, he rambled on for at least 40 minutes. And finally, Doug says, "You got any opinions about that sign?" And I said, "Well, I can exactly tell you how to get those Holsteins bred back. Start having them make 18,000 as two-year-olds again." But no, we don't want that. We want 35, 40,000 out of them. Well, when they're milking that hard, come on, they're not going to breed back right away. <laughs> you're, and that, and that, and then with, with price of milk last year, everybody likes a little bigger cow now again. Selfish value. <laughs> they don't want the little one all of a sudden. They want the big one. Another great guy was we had one place from Iowa sells. I don't know how many thousands of heifers he used to sell. I don't know. I don't even know if Hadwin's living anymore. Yeah, he's still alive. Living, but I, I think uh, really. I don't know if he sells any heifers anymore. Okay, he, he might have left that. Does it's not a regular but business. Over 20 years ago, but I was. Thousand cows, cows It was over 20 years ago because the Adans were out, and I was at his herd, and we got done, and we we started talking. He says, "You know, these commercial guys, they always talk about too big a cow, too big a cow." He says. When I sell heifers, I you know my clients really good. And if a guy's going to buy 50, or if he's going to buy 10, if he's going to buy 10, I put I run 20 out there from the pit from him. If he's going to buy 50, I run 75 out there from him. And not one of those guys will take that little one. The only way I can get rid of that little one is drop the price on her. He says they will not take her. But yet, when they're home, that's all they talk about. Small cows are the best cows. I'm going to finish my thing here, but I got to say one more thing about yesterday. We we when we got. To, to, de to talk about the cows, uh, the forwarder on a cow, how important I think it is. Dr. Tom Lauer took all the cows that made 200, that were classified, 200,000 pounds in the breed well, quite a few years ago. Well, four. It might even be a little longer than that. We had two of them. I know Marty Kenyon had three, and I think Hank Van Dyke had three. Yeah, that's that study that Holstein was doing. Yeah. This is a different yeah, study. And uh, the highest correlating linear trait on all those cows was four under. Now, for the guy that wants small cows, short cows, the second linear trait was tall. Why would tall be? I asked that yesterday. Someone come up with the answer right away. Because they can mature into an animal. No, it's utter depth. Utter depth. Yeah. Utter depth. Utter depth. Oh. You take a tall cow and a short cow, you put the same udder on them, which udder is going to get deeper quicker? <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> Which one goes down the road quicker? When the udder gets down here, so you don't want to bend the milker no more. And what side just up said, here? What he just said about four udder, which trait's got the highest correlation to four udder strength? Udder depth. Yep. If you get around, if somebody, one time I was telling him, I was picking on Pete Logic, and he's passed away now too, but I was picking on him. We, we and Dan were at a, we had a conference in 91 in Madison, and he says, you guys, he come in and give us all a talk, and he's telling us that we gotta lighten up on them forwarders, we gotta go to a modern way. You gotta have that biology forwarder to make the milk. We want them two years to start milking 100 pounds, they gotta have that biology forwarder. I raised my hand right away and I said, well, what do we do with the ones that milk 100 pounds that got the type forwarder? 
Make them double excellent? Well, no, 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 he, he, he talks around it, you know. So anyway, I gotta tell you this, I was up at Green Meadows and Pete was always up there at Green Meadows when you scored. I started to bring this up, I didn't, and he's got a memory like an old horse. He did have a memory like an old horse. I didn't even get it all the way out of my mouth, and he says, I'll give you that one, Sarge. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we proved him wrong. And that's why we made so much progress. I think why we made so much progress in others because of Berlin. When we got to be, start having places to measure, we got some more uniform on, on, as a staff. And I'll say this about genomics. When, when they, we had a guy come in from, from Brattleboro in 2009 in Green Bay and talk about genomics. And when he was talking, I was listening, I thought it was going to be really good because they'd probably start using a wider a range of cows, but we narrowed the gap, actually, we narrowed it up. But I really did think, I said, man, when they pull the hair, the type is going to be up and down. The most accurate thing on genomics is type. So I got to give our boys a tap on the back for collecting damn good information because that information, the only thing that, the only, a scientist needs numbers to make numbers. And that myth about, oh, we won't need classification anymore because we'll take this piece of hair and we'll tell you if she's good. He could do that probably for about two generations without type, and then what's he going to draw on? He needs numbers to make numbers. So classification safe, guys, no matter what anybody thinks. Tell, tell him, Simon, what you, what you talked about this morning about the, uh, about the base change with type. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I missed that yesterday. You know, this is very important for you guys. It really is. Every five years, USDA rolls the production back. Well, every five years, Holstein rolls the pipe back. Sometimes we roll it back three tenths of a point. I can remember one time we rolled it back two tenths of a point. The last two times we rolled it back more than 0.8. The last two times. So what is that telling you? That cow that would have scored 85 10 years ago, that two-year-old, she will now be 83. And when you guys say to us, boy, you're sure tougher on two-year-olds, than you used to be, we say no. The average is 78, but in reality we are. But when the base changes, we gotta change, and you just gotta change. And, and the perfect thing is, is just go back 25, 30 years and pull out your type issue that comes out in January. Look at those cows that are under, that's the All-American nomination issue, and the BAs are in there. You look at those cows that, that were nominated All-American 30 years ago, they're not even standing in the top 10 no more. And that's a hat off to you guys, making progress. But we roll the type back. If we didn't roll the type back, maybe we wouldn't make no progress. It's like a BA. Somebody says BA is not important. To me, it's important. Nah, yeah, not having the 111 and 113s. But how many farms I go to, it happens at least once a month, if not three times a month. The guy will say, I got 103, I got 104. Do you think I got that or did I gain on it? I said, I don't know. But that's what he's measuring his base if he's making progress. You could have 103, 103, and 103, and you'd still be making progress. Not any faster to breed is. But if you're making, but that's how people, a lot of people that are just want to make progress, use that BA to see if they're making progress. Hey, so I got a question. Yes. In regards to your BAA score, and I know earlier you said show ring isn't classification; it's totally different. But now you're talking. How has the association changed the way it scores cows now compared to 20 years ago? Because 20 years ago, you wanted those cows that were more substance. Now you want those cows that are more stylish. Or is that just a show ring that's thing? That's just a show ring thing. You're not, that's not nothing to do with the classification. You're all taking what you're seeing in the show, and, and it doesn't apply to what I do, or what Willis does, or what them other two guys are going to do, or what Dan used to do. It doesn't apply. Wouldn't you say that there's actually more emphasis on strength today? Oh, way more than when I started out. It was dairy character, dairy character, and we had them. Sometimes they were really skinny with an open rib, but I mean really frail bone, but they did have the open rib. And we'd have to make those cows what our, what our linear was. It, 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 or else you had to change your, your linear scores. Well, you don't want to do that if you want to be honest with the breeder. Well, she was really dairy. Now, with the strength, I can make this cow 45, and I don't have to make her 94 in dairy. I can say, well, I didn't quite have her 40, but yesterday's cow, she was 45 in dairy uh, form, and she was 44 in strength. That cow, you don't have to touch. Just do her what she is. You're not taking her ad on every cow. 
It's not math, and sometimes everybody thinks every cow you're adding on. I don't know what the percentage is, but I can tell you it's somewhere between 30 and 40 percent that we change, changing on them. We're not changing every cow. A lot of cows, you get a two-year-old, she's 30 in strength, and she's uh, maybe 28 in strength, and she's 33 in dairy form. I'm making her 85. It's based on a mature cow. She's 28, man. She's she's better than average on a mature cow, so I don't change anything on her. But now if I get a two-year-old and I made her 37, and I got her 12 or 10 in front end capacity, I'm slamming her on dairy strength. Sorry, can I? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Just to, to uh, talk about just a little bit about, about this, this skinny versus strength, I think for a lot of show judges, not necessarily at your big shows, but but you know they want that razor sharp cow that she can blow away in the wind at times. And your classification program classifier is much more. That's why when you get a classifier looking at watching a, a judge judge a cow show, he said that guy ain't milked enough cows himself because if they take these kind as opposed to the kind that got some heart. It got some oomph to them, or Yakabuski, as Sai says. Those are much more the kind of cows that a classifier is looking for than that, that tall, real thin cow that just doesn't have the power. How many times, Willis, would you say in the summer, when you get to the summer shows, you're going to get to a farm and you're going to make this cow, and she's probably about 58 inches tall, and you're going to make her 90, 91, and she's been competing against this other cow that's a giant, and the giant cow's been beating her. And you get to the other place and you make his cow 88, and he said, well, yesterday you were at my neighbor's. My cow's been kicking her ass all summer long, and you're telling me, well, good for you. Your cow was kicking his ass. It's got nothing to do with my classification. I'm here to do functional type. That's what irritates me about show ring type versus classification. It's not the same guys. We're doing functionality, they're doing style and haul and all the good stuff that goes with it. And heck, I'm a showboy, I love it. But it's not the same. So anyway, getting sorry, back to sorry, where I yeah, got, a question. Oh, got another question. Yeah, Mark. You're talking about udder. This cow has a really good udder floor as far as being level. Where in the scorecard or how do you give her extra credit for having a, a nearly level udder floor with that really good okay, floor udder? Okay, when you get done, when you get to the udder score, I'm just getting in there with all the things we do, okay. do, do about uh, how we score that. Feet and legs, I got to 20% and I didn't get to the udder score. So let me go through that and I think can answer your question there, okay? Now udder is 40% of the score. And we take our linear traits and that really does drive us, plus we want quality. Judgment call a lot of times, but you want quality. And if you're if you're unsure of the quality milk or out, then you got it. But I don't. I hope I don't have to milk that many out. I hope I can get it. But sometimes I got to milk them out. And the last thing we do is like we could call it the style of the other or whatever. But that's we used to do the linear trait of uh, kill. And I can remember when we first started doing that. I was wondering to myself, how many did I miss? That's one thing linear does for you it makes you look at the whole cow. Because all of a sudden I started seeing these two-year-olds with this reverse tilt, and I wasn't seeing it when I wasn't looking for it. And then when I had to start looking for it, I started seeing it. And with us, when we do tilt, if it's a severe tilt, we're calling a severe tilt two inches. And that's pretty severe when you start both ways. We're, we're docking on the reverse tilt and the regular tilt, but I'm gonna tell you on a young cow, I'd rather have reverse tilt than the regular tilt, because that gets worse. The regular tilt, the, rever the reverse tilt, if it's not severe, it always seems to level up by second, or if not for sure by the third lactation, you're looking at a flat bottom cow. But it does it does have uh, merit when we do the other. We do we do consider that, but it's the style of the other. Another thing we gotta do now, on rear teeth place, we've been doing this for about a year and a half too. If they're too short, we dock about a point on the other. If they're too short and crossing, we're docking three points in the other. So if you've got those teats that are touching at the base and crossing, and she's got a, you break her udder down, you got a, a 91 point udder, we're making it 88 because of this. And, and I always want to say, the type advisory committee does all this for you guys, and, and they're always farmers, a few, few uh, stud guys on there. They take everything to the board, and the board approves it. And those guys wanted something done with this. The breeders did. 
Me and Willis, we're just the police. We got to enforce it. It doesn't mean that I have to agree with it. This I have to agree with. <laughs> but on some things, you don't have to agree with it. But I still do it because that's my job. We're like the police. We enforce it. So, but the, the style the other, that's what I'd call the reverse tilt. And we do take that into consideration, just like we do the regular tilt. Yeah, I guess, I mean, talking about shoring cows, obviously everybody knows Apple. You know, she has had an extreme reverse tilt since Never she come out. I always thought it looked better, and she, but hers was, and it's, it, last year at Madison, it was just as bad as it was when she was a junior. Yeah, and some of her clones are a lot better than she is herself as far as being level. But, you know, to get a cow that high, it's like, well, something must be look fast a little bit because she has an extreme reverse. I think when you get a classifier in a barn and he scores a cow and makes a remark about that cow with those back tits crossed, uh, the dairyman has got a whole lot more respect for you uh, in your decision on, on calling that a defect because he milks that cow every day. And uh, I know nowadays we're getting big dairies and, and you got other people milking the cows and the guy that owns them but if you're milking your own cows, that is one thing that you have to mess with every day, depending on how many times a day you milk. And I've never had a guy when I scored cows that ever complained about me docking a cow because her back gets crossed, and he had a mess with her every day. They usually tell you right away, she's a problem. She's a squawker, a bad titus. Bad titus cow. I'll rest you, but when I hear later squawking while I'm milking, it drives me nuts. Yep. <laughs> So is there any other questions? I don't, I think we got, we got to go in and look at a couple cows in the barn. I think. What would you score her side? What's your... Oh, I, this cow was 88 in the barn. I would have no problem making this cow 90 today. I would make her, in her front end capacity, I'd make her about 91. I'd also do it about the same in dairy, 91 or 2. I'd make her rump, excellent, I love her rump. She's got a little bit of recess. I can still make this. The thing I want, where I dig her the most, is rear view on her legs. This one here tracks pretty good, but you're always going to catch this one. And uh, but, but that foot angle is pretty good. So I, I got to take all of it. The bone quality is not bad. I got to take all of it into consideration, even though that's our driving point. But I'm going to probably make her very good in her feet and legs. And her udder is drop dead gorgeous. All I want to do is just get, but it's bigger than what you think. That's where we want our capacity. Guys, when, my brother can attest to this. We had a cow named Poppy, and she was our one of the best milk cows in her day in Aldegame County. And she was milking 80 pounds back there in the early 60s. And her udder wouldn't fit in a wash tub, would it, Bob? And now you get these two-year-old udders. When I first started class, maybe every six months, we'd hear a two-year-old milking 100 pounds. Every day, a two-year-old milking 100 pounds, and they got shallow udders. We've done such great progress on udders, guys. And it's it's a credit to you guys, and it's a credit to the whole seed association classifiers improving that udder. That the biggest improvement, yesterday someone said, would you say the biggest improvement in a cow is dairy? And I said, heck no, udders by a walking away, udders. Come off. Walking away. We made a lot of progress in dairy and flat bone, but folks, you got, just, you got one of the best comments in the breed here. You got any questions for him? Would you make her in the udder then? I'd make her 91 in the other. Only the reason I don't make her 92, and I think she's going to get. If I come back here two years from now and she's 95 in the other, it won't surprise me. But we're not. That, that's about genomics. That's a predictor. Whether you're for it or against it, this is not predictive. We get to do them alive on the hoof. Hey, Sai, let's go back to. I mean, uh, let's go back to the legs. The side view of the leg. Now, the side view. Yeah. Your ideal. Where's your ideal leg? If you look at this one's my ideal one. You look at that one. It's too much set. Okay. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Come over here on this side. You're gonna say, "Wow, that's a hell of a leg." You come on this side. She got a little too much set. She's too legged. A lot of cows are. Wouldn't you say years ago? Side view is what everybody talked about because we didn't have rear view. Oh yeah. And now with with foot angle and rear view being the driving force between longevity and the cow, side view. I know in our our barn at home, side view has rarely taken a cow out of the barn ever, but rear right. view is taken out a pile. Just like when yeah. we score feet and legs, the pasture is the last the last thing that we do, just look at. But yeah, it's undesirable. But seriously, a, a broken down pasture that really hardly ever taken a cow to the yard. And for me, 
rear view foot angle it drives me, and I almost like bone quality better than lake side view. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but that's but but that's my preference, and that's one thing about the breed. Everybody, every breeder can have a little different preference. Classifiers, you can't have a machine sport cow. That's why we have a rotation because every classifier sees feet and legs a little different. We're pretty damn accurate when it comes to udders and dairy though. But everybody sees some classifiers are like a little straighter leg, some like a little given leg. Uh, me, I like the ideal 25. I just want to take this this time just for a minute here to to thank my really good friend Cy Letter because he tells it like it is. He tells it to the breeders this way when he's scoring cows and also today. And you know what, folks? Pam uh, Sell said yesterday. She says I thought I knew everything about classification and I learned a lot today. And so I made a comment yesterday. At least we know you folks still like tight. Make, 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 make them feel good. But I want to have everybody. Uh, Thank you. 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 Thank you.